Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to day 87 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year, which is less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. We are excited to have you here. Let's get started. Day 87, March 28, 2022, 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Numbers 23, verse 27 to 30. Numbers 24, Numbers 25, New Testament, Luke 7, verse 11 to 35, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 38, verse 1 to 11. Old Testament, NIV version, Numbers 23, verse 27 to 30, Balaam's third message. Then Balak said to Balaam, come, let me take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God to let you curse them for me from there and Balak to Balaam to the top of Peor overlooking the wasteland Balaam said build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on each altar numbers 24 verse 1 to 25. Now, when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not resort to divination as at other times, but turned his face toward the wilderness. When Balaam looked out and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came on him and he spoke his message. The prophecy of Balaam, son of Beor, the prophecy of one whose eye sees clearly, the prophecy of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. How beautiful are your tents, Jacob, your dwelling places, Israel. Like valleys they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes, Planted by the Lord like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their seed will have abundant water. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. They devour hostile nations and break their bones in pieces. With their arrows they pierce them. Like a lion, they crouch and lie down, like a lioness who dares to rouse them. May those who bless you be blessed, and those who curse you be cursed. Then Balak's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them this three times. Now, leave at once and go home. I said I would re Reward you handsomely, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. Balaam answered Balak, Did I not tell the messengers you sent me, even if Balak give me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord, and I must say only what the Lord says? Now I am going back to my people, but come, let me warn you. Of what these people will do to your people in days to come. Balaam's fourth message. Then he spoke his message. The prophecy of Balaam, son of Beor, the son of the prophecy of who of one whose eye sees clearly. The prophecy of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the people of Sheth. Edom will be conquered, Seir, his enemy, will be conquered, but Israel will go strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Hallelujah. Balaam's fifth message. 
Then Balaam saw Amalek and spoke his message. Amalek was first among the nations, but their end will be utter destruction. Balaam's sixth message. Then he saw the Kenites and spoke his message. Your dwelling place is secure. Your nest is set in a rock. Yet you Kenites will be destroyed when Ashur takes you captive. Balaam's seventh message. Then he spoke his message. Alas, who can live when God does this? Ships will come from the shores of Cyprus. They will subdue Ashur and Eber, but they too will come to ruin. Then Balaam got up and returned home, and Balak went his own way. Numbers 25, verse 1 to 18. Moab seduces Israel. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meat and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death those of your people who have yoked themselves to the bow of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelites into the tent. He drove the spear into both of them, right through the Israelite man and into the woman's stomach. Then the plague against the Israelite was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites, since he was as zealous for my honor among them as I am. I did not put an end to them in my zeal. Therefore tell him, I am making my covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. The name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman is Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of a Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Cosby, daughter of Zur, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them. They treated you as enemies when they deceived you in the Peor incident involving their sister Cosby, the daughter of a Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of that incident. New Testament NIV version, Luke chapter 7 verse 11 to 35, Jesus raises a widow's son. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier. They were carrying him on. And the bearer stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Hallelujah. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Jesus and John the Baptist. 
John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Jesus went on to say, To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all her children. Psalms and Proverbs. Psalm 38 verse 1 to 11. A Psalm of David, a petition. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord, my sighing is not hidden from you my heart pounds my strength fails me even the light has gone from my eyes my friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds my neighbors stay far away amen thank you so much for hanging out with me it is a pleasure to have you here as always please if you haven't yet made jesus your personal lord and savior it will be my pleasure to lead you in this prayer of salvation. Please repeat after me as you believe in your heart every word you say. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Congratulations. If you said that prayer, we're so excited to welcome you into God's family. Please go ahead and send us a message. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Thank you so much for hanging around with me again. It is always a pleasure to have you here. Please, if you haven't yet done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. Thank you. Bye.